So in the last video, we got all the package versions that we needed to go and start creating our flash loan smart contract. And in this video, we're going to set up the hard hat configuration that we need for our project to work. The first thing I'm going to do here is just make some changes here to this name. Instead of calling this flash loan underscore BSC, I'm going to call it BSC underscore flash loan like that. And then I'm just going to come out of the project completely after saving it. And I'm going to then go back into the project. And now I'm back in the project. And that's just to make sure that all directories, everything that VS Code needs to be looking at, it's looking at in the right place. Sometimes my VS Code can be a bit finicky. So I recommend if you make any changes here, just come out of VS Code, come back in and continue with me over here. Now I'm going to switch the webcam off here so that you have more space to see code, but I'll pop back occasionally. Right, remember if you haven't done so already, just go yarn dash dash exact to make sure that you have all these packages installed. Provided you have that, you can go here to npx hard hat. So npx hard hat like such and go down to create a TypeScript project. Now, when you hit enter, enter again and enter again, everything happens very quickly this time because those packages are already installed and they're all the versions that we set up in the last video. So that all worked pretty quickly. So within test here, we're actually just going to go and delete this lock.ts file. And here where we have contracts lock.sol, I'm actually gonna go and delete that because we don't need that. And here within scripts deploy, I'm going to get rid of all this code here. I'm just going to remove it completely and save like this. So there's actually nothing now in this main function. Excellent. Let's go over to test again, create a new file, and I'm going to call this flash test.ts. And if you want to use a capital F for that, just to be consistent with how hard hat did it, feel free to do so. I'm just going to call this flash test.ts for TypeScript. And we're just going to write some brief code just to get going with our hard hat project to make sure everything's working. Before we go and write a ton of code, I wanna make sure it's working as it should be. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is just import ethers from, and here this will be hard hat. And this is going to be here in open and close curly braces. And then what I'm going to do is write a function. So this is gonna be describe open and close here, cause we're gonna do basically unit testing here. And I'm going to say a basic test. And this basic test is just going to, for example, get the latest block number. And so here we can just put a function that will be called as part of doing this. And within that, we can have another describe if we wanted to, or in fact here, what I'm gonna do is just say it, um, not if, sorry, it gets block number. And then I'm going to put a function here and the same thing again. Now we're going to make some calls to our local blockchain, but even so they're going to be asynchronous calls. And so here we need async before the word function and because we're going to await on some things. And so here we can create a provider and this is going to be from the ethers library. And to start with, we're just going to say ethers dot provider like like that, ethers.provider. And then here we'll say const block number is going to be equal to provider.get, and that will be dot get block number, open and close parentheses, and we'll make this await because that should be an asynchronous call. And then I'm going to say console.log block number, and here we'll just go and print alongside that the block number there like follows. And so now to check this is all working, we can go npx hard hat test. And when I go and do that, it runs a basic test. It gets the block number and it prints that block number out here as block number zero. So why is this block number zero? Well, because it's running a local blockchain. It's not forking a mainnet. So it's not getting the latest mainnet or anything like that. It's actually just running a local blockchain with dummy data in it, which is very handy if you're just doing generic testing or general testing of smart contracts. But if I want to interact with something like PancakeSwap V3, I'm going to need something better than that. 
So one way to deal with this, for example, is we could create another terminal here. So now I've got two terminals, the one that we were just working in and another one here. Now, if you Google Binance Smart Chain provider URL, and just for example, go to Chainlist, you'll see there's loads of blockchain providers here. So these are nodes you can connect to to get information about the blockchain. And so a very, very common one, or the most common one used, I would say, is usually this one here, which is the bsc-datac.binance.org. And you can see that some of these are actually ahead of that one there. But this is just you know a general one that is usually always available. It has been down a few times, but it's usually available. So this is the one I'm going to pick here. Once I have that provider here, I'm just gonna comment this out and say const provider is equal to new ethers.providers.json RPC provider. Open and close parentheses. And then this needs to just be put in there as a string. And so now I'm going to use this as the provider. So it's actually gonna to connect to the live blockchain, although it won't unless I do something quite specific. So for example here, if I just went NPX hard hat uh, test again, like such, you'll see it'll still run that test, but now it's connecting to that provider and it's using this block number 31250881. Now, if I want the blockchain that I'm running, so if I want the blockchain that I'm running here to actually be a fork of this blockchain, I can go npx hardhat node, and then I can go dash dash fork, and then I can paste in this provider. And now this is going to run a node which has forked that blockchain. So it's actually created like a replica at this point in time of the blockchain, the, the Binance Smart Chain. And it's actually allowing me to interact with it on a URL here, which is on my own local machine, which is HTTP 127.0.0.1 um, port 8545. And so what I'm gonna do here is actually put that in here now. And so if I go back to my other terminal, so on this terminal, I've got my node running. So lo my locally forked node. Remember we ran that by going npx hardhat node dash dash fork, and then where to fork it from. And then here, what I'm gonna do is go npx hardhat test and run this test again here. And you can see, there we go. It's going and pulling an actual block number and it's getting it from the forked mainnet. Now, if I keep running this, you'll see it keeps pulling that same block number. And so the disadvantage when you're forking is it's not continually getting the latest blockchain information. It only gets it here every time you run it. But if I was to go and stop this, and you can see here, it's actually telling me what interactions I'm doing with my node here. If I stop this running and I run it again, and then here I go and run this again, you'll see now it's got a different block number. So this was just a basic test that I wanted to show you before we go and actually now set up our hard hat configuration, which is exactly what we're about to go and do. Hey Kodo, just remember that all the code for the full flash loan smart contract fully working end to end is available at coderators.com. And also there is a full walkthrough here on how to install it and get it up and running with a video walkthrough on how to do that too. So remember that's there. And if you are looking to send flash loan smart contract transactions without the competition being aware, definitely check out Submarine Sends here. Most people don't know what Submarine Sends are, but if you go and view the docs here of the Submarine Sends, there's actually a video or a link to a video explaining what they are with all the code on how to run that too. We don't want to have to keep running our own node like this and then forking the blockchain. Let's say, there was a way to do that a bit more automatically. And so that's actually what we're going to go and do now when we set it up. So you can actually stop running this node and you can delete that terminal. We'll stay within this. We can clear our terminal, so it's all clear. And let's go over here to hardhat.config.typescript. And the first thing I wanna do here is import .env from .env, like follows, and then .env.config. And the reason why I want to use .env is because we're going to work with our own private key. And you will need a private key for the Binance Smart Chain to follow along here. 
So make sure if you haven't got one, go and create a wallet or set up a MetaMask account or something. I'll show you how I get mine, but make sure you have a private key. And the other thing we'll do is also specify, you know, what is the provider that we want for our mainnet or our testnet. So to do all of this, let's just go touch.env. And then over here in our environment variables, I'm going to say mainnet underscore provider underscore URL. And that's going to be equal to, if I go back here to my internet, let's see if I can find it. There it is there. I'm going to use this one, the bsc-datac.binance.org. You know, we found this here on Chainlist via Google. So I'm just going to use that. And then if you did want a testnet, you could do the same thing here. We're not going to be using testnet, but you will know how to use testnet. So let's just put it here as part of doing the series for those of you who might want to use testnet. You'll know how to do it later on when we go and deploy to mainnet. It's the same thing, except you'd use testnet instead of mainnet. So let's show you how to set that up. So here I'm going to say testnet. And then let's go over here to Chainlist. And here's some testnet ones. I'm going to pick this one here, datac.prebsc-1-s1.bnbchain.org port 8545. So that's the one I'll use for that. And then over here, we need a private key. So private underscore key needs to be equal to 0x and make sure that your private key starts with a 0x. So preface what we're about to go and get here with 0x, very important. Let me go over here to my MetaMask and go to your account, your three dots by your account, account details. And when you go to show private key, then you can get your private key. Let's pretend this was my private key here. It's not, I don't want to show my private key publicly, but just to show you, this is what a private key would look like. In fact, it might be a bit longer. It should look something like this sort of structure but make sure there's a zero X. When you actually go show private key, usually MetaMask doesn't give it to you with the zero X. So you have to put the zero X first. I'm gonna go and paste mine in, and then I'll see you over at hardhat.config.ts. Now that we've got our mainnet provider URL, our testnet provider URL to connect to, and our private key entered in, let's actually pull them over here. So here I'm gonna say mainnet or const mainnet underscore provider underscore URL is going to be equal to process dot env. This is how we get it from our environment variable dot mainnet underscore provider underscore URL and put an exclamation mark and a semicolon to say that it absolutely must be there. And let's say console dot log mainnet dot provider URL. And here, if I go npx hard hat test, so npx hard hat test like this, you'll see it actually, don't worry about this error right now, by the way, that's absolutely expected. But if I scroll up here, you'll see that it has actually successfully retrieved that from the environment variables. And you could do this yourself testing for, you know, private key as well, etc. But the key thing is you need to know that it's actually pulling that data. Now, why did this fail? Because we're not running a node. And in our test here, we just ran npx hard add test. It's trying to look at our local host here to connect to that node. But remember, we killed it in our terminal. So that's not running anymore. That's why we got this error. But that's expected and that's fine. Now, we're not just going to work with, you know, one version of Solidity here. We want to work with various pragmas because the various code that we're basically using here uses more than one version of Solidity. And so we're going to use different compilers. And the way we do that is we just get rid of that and we say compilers, and this will be a list. So we'll put that in square brackets. And the first one is gonna be version, version here, and that will be 0 0.8.10. And there'll be another one as well, which there will be 0 0.8.13. Hit save. My Pretty has automatically formatted that. And that looks pretty good. Now, here's how we can automate the settings for each of the networks we want to connect to. And I love how Hard Hat makes this so easy. So here, what we're going to do is say networks, colon. And the first one will be our local one. So every time we go NPX Hard Hat test, I wanted to go and pull the correct network. So I'm going to put in here networks and I'm going to say hard hat. And this means local essentially when I put hard hat because I could put mainnet 
And so just for example, to show you what I mean there, here we'll call this mainnet. And above that, we'll actually create one here as well for testnet. So, you know, here are my networks. So when I go and add a network to say deploy, my deploy code later on in the series, we can, we can tell it what network we're working with. Are we just doing this locally with a forked blockchain? Are we doing it with the testnet? Are we doing it with the real live mainnet in the real world? And so this is how we can set that all up. So here I'm gonna say forking, and that is going to include a URL. And so the URL I want to use here to fork is my mainnet provider URL, just like we did when down here we went npx hardhat node and we went dash dash fork and then we entered the url that's what we're essentially doing over here now we're doing it automatically for testnet we need to set the url and so that's going to be the testnet um, in fact have we imported that up here no we haven't so let's go and import that up here now so instead of mainnet provider that'll be our testnet provider url and here that will be testnet provider URL. So great, we've got that. And that will be our URL. And the chain ID is also important because for the testnet for Binance Smart Chain, that's chain ID 97. And the accounts that we're going to be using is just one account. And it's this account with our private key. So we also need to bring in our private key here, private underscore key. And that's going to be private key is what we called it in the environment variables. And so here's my private key. And I can just copy these settings here, paste them down here into mainnet and replace them. So this will be mainnet provider URL. And this will be chain 56 is the mainnet for Binance Smart Chain. And the private key is still the same. Great. So we've now got our hardhat configuration file set up. Now, if I go npx hardhat test, and I hit enter, which I won't do yet because we need to go over here and get rid of this provider for a second. I'm just going to do it like this, ethers.provider. And I hit enter and you'll see here, it has actually, instead of just saying zero for the block number, like we had before, it has gone and forked just like we told it to here. So it's gone and forked that main net and it has therefore successfully got a recent block number. And so that's very, very useful. And we could reinstate this code and hide that code there. And here I'm just going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to go npx hardhat node. And this time I'm not going to do dash dash fork. I'm just going to hit enter. And then going back here, I'm going to go npx hardhat test again. And you can see it's done the same thing again. It's connected to the node. So our node here has connected it has forked and it is outputting a signal to this local host, which we just connected to here. And when we run the test, it then picks it up. If I was to again, stop this node, let's remove it there. And I tried to run it now, it'll fail. And therefore I then should just go about doing it like this. So if I then get rid of this, it will then pass. Now, just a quick note on NPX hardhat node which I'll just run here for you quickly. These are all the accounts that it comes with. And so when we go and get the, the, the signer or the wallet to use, it'll be the first wallet. You can see it's actually giving us private keys here. And so these are the accounts that we will actually interact with. In fact, we'll just use the first one. That's the most common way to interact with ethers and hard hat is just to use the first account that hard hat gives us. So again, I will stop that node. We won't need it now, but congratulations because you now know how to go and fork the blockchain. And therefore we can simulate transactions that we know will be able to interact with PancakeSwap V3 or PancakeSwap V2 because those are in these recent block numbers. If you started with zero, it wouldn't know the contracts for PancakeSwap V3 and PancakeSwap V2. You have to fork a mainnet or a testnet. And I would suggest a mainnet because not all testnets are running decentralized exchanges as you would see them, you know, on the mainnet. Now you know how to do it. And so that's a really useful skill. In the next video, what we're going to start doing is actually building out our smart contract and writing our tests to interact with it. So until then, take care and talk soon.